Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream where we are going to be continuing with some more European Universalis 4 with the Cradle of Civilization DLC. Uh, Master Matt, you're asking what is the consensus for this DLC? Uh, I'm not actually allowed to say whether I like this or not, but considering how much of this I am playing right now, that's probably all you need to know. <laughs> um, yeah, it is what it is. Right, so um, we are playing as the Mamluks. We, in the last episode, just continued to expand a little bit. We are slowly but surely, surely uh, gobbling up the vassals that we've taken. We're also recovering our economy. I think we are now finally debt-free. We are indeed. I think we did that right at the end of the last episode. And we are now in a position to start building up our armies. That's what we were doing. We just got to our force limits, though. As I was doing that, I actually realized, hang on, we can get a cannon now. We should probably be getting some artillery as well. So, hmm. Artillery needs to be a thing at some point, not too distant. Also, the other one is, when can I go and annex another vassal? Not for another two years. So once we've got the next vassal in two years, then that's probably when we will go and expand the army again. Uh, and get those cannons, which are finally available. I mean, cannons still in this era are not great. Cannons really start to come in their own with chambered demi cannon and leather cannon that's when i really start to double down on them but they're still pretty nice to have for sieges so i might get like five units or something like that just to get the siege bonuses uh but in the meantime we we're still like kings of the battlefield what's the fire modifier for artillery it's not going to be very high at all like we are still super early uh it is currently one so artillery is slightly better at shooting stuff than infantry, but infantry is still a lot better at shock than artillery are. And we're, like, doubling down on how good our cavalry is. Uh, we are the Mamluks after all, and we have got the various bonuses to combat with. Although, actually, that's a good point. Uh, we are almost at the end of this age. No, we already are at the end of that age. So we don't get the cavalry bonuses anymore, so our combat width will have reduced. Uh, are we getting any of these? This is something I had completely forgotten to check. Mercenary discipline could be good. Trade ship propagation is really nice. I thought that was a Venice only one. Or maybe that was in the first age. Yeah, I think Venice have like a plus 50% as like one of their unique bonuses. So in this one we've got Persia, Poland, Mughals. And Spain. Ooh, Spanish tercios are rather good. So unify culture. Own all provinces of your culture group. We need the whole of the Levant, which is not going to happen. Actually, it might do. Culture. What are we lacking? Because we have all of Egypt. All of the Egyptian. Like... Does that mean all of our accepted cultures? Because that's kind of ridiculous if it is. In which case it would be... You. Except my culture is not Levantine, is it? Oh, of the culture group. <laughs> which is Turkish as well. Yeah, that's not going to happen anytime soon, so forget that one. Converted another nation. Um... I don't know that there are any foreign nation places around us, except for Daosh. Oh, no, that's... Are they actually Shia? State religion, Sunni, no. Shia is here, so that would be Karakunulu, which we could definitely do. Karakunulu, as someone pointed out. Been saying that wrong for a while. Uh, what other ones? Yeah, I have a feeling we're not going to be getting any of these, honestly. Humanist or religious? Well, we could actually get the religious idea group, because that is one that we were planning on getting, and then Reformation completely irrelevant that's one thing which i don't like about this system is it's it's really specific towards certain regions and certain countries and if you're not in that specific group then it has absolutely no bearing on you whatsoever like we're seeing right now colonial empire nope conversion probably not humanist or religious maybe join reformation nope we're not catholic uh converted another nation probably not asian trade gain trade bonus from silk spice or china were Maybe. I mean, silk. Spice. No, spice would be India. China would be China, and silk would also probably be China. 
so nope. And then unify con uh, culture. Yeah, let's go up against the Ottomans again. Although we did beat them last time, uh, we could probably do it again. It is kind of an expensive thing to do, um, considering it took us the better part of 20 years to recover again. What did you miss? A lot. <laughs> I mean, it is already 1510. Um, this will be up on YouTube, so if you have missed some of what's happened thus far, like in the series thus far, then I would recommend you go and check that out. Uh, you can find that at youtube.com slash Viking. I mean, this would theoretically be episode 19 already. Um, so yeah, there, there, there is a fair amount that's already happened. A lot of that will be up on YouTube because I have been bulk uploading it while I have the privilege of having the uh, preview. Uh, but basically, we have just been conquering and consolidating the Egyptian area and also trying to take over Saudi Arabia. We do control a lot of the smaller nations here as vassals. We're way over our vassal limit. One, two, three, four. Plus one, two, three allies. Right, I lost a doll. So we've actually... We're not as bad off. We're only four over now. Alright, that, that that's a lot better. Also, we have absolutely no royal marriages. Whoops. We should probably go and fix that. So let's go and have a full round of royal marriages once again. Huzzah. Diplomacy. Royal marriage with you. And with you. And with you. But I have no diplomats. So we'll need to wait for you. Royal marriage. And then Basra. Royal marriage. And then Dal, uh, what are they called? Dulkadir. Royal marriage. Uh, Ajam, I'm not allied anymore. Are you likely to get uh, become a vassal? No. Mostly because distance. So if I took out Kara Kanunlu, then we could be able to do that. I think that is all of the people now married up, right? Nope, Najd isn't. Akanulu isn't. Tunis isn't. Alright then. <laughs> Not even close. Najd. Tunis, yes. We want to keep these guys sweet because they're quite big. Tunis. And Akanulu. Which I had kind of forgotten about. Uh, you were another one of the ones that I was trying to work towards uh, getting vassalized. Your economic base is still a lot stronger than mine. Um, yeah, I think I basically just need to start spending some money on building workshops and just generally in improving the amount of money that we earn. Anti-clericalism. The merchant guilds of several prominent cities are accusing the Alima of being greedy and in indolent. The pious commoners are now withholding the tithe in a pro protest against the particularly bad example of... I feel like you've got something on my back. Oh, man. That's probably just my hair. <laughs> Uh, withholding the tithe in a protest against a particularly bad example of misuse of the authority of the Alima. Pious merchant guilds are now objecting to paying taxes to the Alima as they consider the Alima unfit to receive them. The Alima are furious and demand that we find the obstinate merchant guilds. So we can force them to pay, which will give us a bunch of money, and reduce autonomy and dumyat. Alima gains loyalty, merchant guilds lose loyalty. Uh, Alima gains influence, which gets them up to 65. Merchant guilds lose it. Or a mild reprimand, which loses the Alima. The Alima, I'm not actually too bothered about pissing off right now. No, I'm going legalist. Crap. I do want to keep them sweet. Not that it really matters, but... Okay. Um, plus, merchants. Do you, like, want to give me money and stuff? I can grant you the Monopoly Charters. And then demand Diplo support. So it is 50% to get the 100. That sounds good to me. Dimmy are really pissed off. You guys are really pissed off because I keep stealing land from you. And then you guys. Um, that would get you up to 45%, which isn't enough. In order to then demand admin support. Uh, however, this loyalty would get you up to 50% loyalty. I'm going to wait until one of these modifiers runs out. In fact, one of them runs out in a month, so we should be just fine. And the knights are still trying to raid me. So it goes. Who's that? Corfu. Naxos is still alive. Man, Ottomans, you've been having a really bad day. Really bad day and a really bad game too. And you're stealing more stuff. We can get a technology, which is Diplotech, which would be very nice because I am way behind on Diplo. I'm also behind on military, which is kind of scary. Yep. 
yeah, we'll get Diplo just because we kind of need to catch up a little bit. The next one is quite a big one because that's when trade ships start to become actually relevant and useful. So we may actually start investing in those. Also, I am losing a lot of money somewhere. What is costing me? Forts, potentially? Probably. Yeah, I seem to have a lot of forts. Let's actually have a look at the fort map mode. As soon as I remember where that is. There it is. So most of my country is protected by zones of control, and we do have a fair bit of defense in depth in that direction. Like, there are no, like, adjacent forts or anything which would cause me problems. I actually quite like those positions. So no, I'm not going to touch the forts. However, I am going to start building some more workshops. That's what I've been meaning to do. Because we can stand to earn quite a lot of money from those workshops. I always want to keep about 100 ducats in the bank just in case uh, we need to start paying for things. We're getting quite a lot of conversion done, which is nice. Darag! Not Darag. -ha. A Sufi Sheikh has passed away in Kusir and his followers are now putting up a shrine in his home, uh, in his honour. Pilgrims from various parts of the country are already starting to come to the province to see the shrine of this great man, and some are calling him a saint. Local notables have set aside charitable donations. A charitable donation its maintenance. For its maintenance, I think that's supposed to say. And his former pupils have opened a lodge nearby. While there is nothing wrong with honouring a great man, some of the more traditionalists among the pious and the Alima feel that this form of worship is sacrilegious. I think that's supposed to be of. Wow, this is... This needs to be checked. Should uh, Yusuf I pay for a shrine in Kwasir to uh, visit... Oh, should Yusuf pay the shrine in Kwasir a visit, it might do much both for the prestige of the shrine itself, but also for the popular expenses. I thought you were saying literally pay for the shrine. I was like, eh. Um, so we can move towards mysticism. But that also increases unrest, or decreases unrest for the rest of the game. And provides plus two tax income. Oh, they both do the same thing. So let us seek guidance at this holy place, or we must not feed into local superstition. I think we want to not feed into local superstition. That also gives us an admin tech cost reduction for 25 years, which is pretty nice. But that plus two tax income to Kwasir? Awesome. Where is that? Uh, great. Just kind of hoping it would appear in one of the events here. Oh, why does it always start at the top? Daraka. It doesn't actually say where it is. Curses! I have no idea. Was it QW? No. What about seer? So I can just look for the final seer word. It was under Q. Cuss. Yeah, I have no idea where that was. I have absolutely no idea where that was. Which is disappointing because I would assume that building like a mosque there now would be quite profitable. Oh, there it is. Q-U-S-A. 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 Y-R. There it is. Ah, it's there. Okay. So, your tax hasn't gone up. Wasn't you? I have no idea. I thought it was this place, but apparently it's not this place. It is this place. Tax income plus two. Sufi train plus 0.17... Right, that's a month, and then yearly it's the extra bonus. Okay, cool, I understand. Uh, ooh, bountiful harvest. The year's harvests have been exceptional, rarely in our nation's history, as the earth brought forth so much of its bounty. The populace is already interpreting this as a sign that we are enjoying divine favour. Excellent. So this isn't unfortunately an Amir territory, otherwise I would give it to the uh, priest guys, and in fact I might do that regardless. Because I know that there were one or two priest places which I wanted to give to the army. So we're going to beef up our troops for a little bit. I'm going to move you two. I'm going to leave you drilling over to Kwasir. 
We're going to strip here the Amirs of their land once again, and I'll give them something else somewhere else. It's totally fine. Plus, we've actually got a bunch of rebels who are due to appear soon. Again, I wish there was a go-to icon. I just... Where is this? So it must be down here somewhere. Salada. Sada. It's right there. Okay. So after this, we'll probably move there. So Kwasir needs to be stripped from the Amirs. Boom. Oh, they didn't get pissed off. Fantastic. Then this goes to the Alima instead, which don't uh, decrease the tax rate, and in fact will increase it if the Alima are actually happy with things. So I'm quite happy to do that, and then I think I might actually spend a little bit of admin just to beef that up just a little bit more. And then I need to give some land to the Amir, I would assume. No, no, they didn't really care. Well, all right then. Are there any other provinces which I could strip away from them? It should be under political estates. There they are. So, Gerja is definitely military. You uh, could be either. Definitely military. Either. Those are all pathetic. So is that. So is that. The merchants are here on the coast, but that's totally fine because that's where the centers of trade are. Oh, these are quite valuable. I might want to strip that away from the Alima. And give them the fish province instead. How happy with life are they? They are exactly on the border. So they would be a little bit pissy if I took away one of their most valuable provinces. But that is a valuable province. Although it is also a grain province, so it's, it's not as valuable. And those are both um, production places. And we don't have any states over there. Cloth, grain. That's one. Oh, wow, that's expensive. No, maybe not. These two could be given away. Like, that would be a good Amir province, and that would be a really good Kwasir problem. Oh, no, they're not a state. Never mind. Yeah, there are definitely a couple of uh, options that I have in case they get a bit needy. Once again. But right now, I'm still pretty happy with how that's all looking. So in the meantime, I'm just going to send my armies down here. I'm going to leave one of you behind just so we're not taking the attrition as we're moving. And then we'll move you. Like so. Okay, good. And despite having full maintenance, we are still making money, which makes me very happy. Although it's not a huge amount of money. How's my professionalism doing, considering I have 30 units of cavalry under training right now? It's growing. It's 12%. I think it was down to like 7. No, it was down to 9. It was just short of being able to get 2 manpower boosts. Harsh caravans raided. A recent caravan of pilgrims for the holy cities was ambushed and plundered. It is our duty to protect them. Uh, yeah, we'll just say the prestige and the legitimacy. That's fine. Right, and I have a load of money, so I can build a bunch more workshops, which I think we should probably do. One, two... Really? Two? Alright then. Again, I don't really want to go less than 100 on that. So you can go over to Sarden. Now, is that going to stop them actually rising up? I think we're just going to stick you here, and then we'll jump in there when they actually rise. Uh, then the other uprising is going to be in Jazon. Which is there. So actually we're going to stand something like this. So both of those are still likely to kick off. If there was a way of like provoking the rebellion. I would absolutely love to have the uh, ability to do that. It's like kick the hornet's nest. Provoke the rebellion. Let them rise up while we're actually in a position to fight them. I know that kind of defeats the entire objective of having rebellions. But hey it would be nice. Not all theologians agree. Normally, this is not much of a problem, as disagreements can exist without problem in the scholarly world. Uh, we lose admin. That's unfortunate. But so it goes. Uh, did we ever finish off Diplo ideas? We did. So we can actually be investing our admin power into development, except for the merchant guilds. I know they quite like us. We could grab the level 3 admin advisor. Which will be 50% cheaper, and if they are a Egyptian, they'll be even... No. A Syrian, they'll be even cheaper then. Because the culture of my ruler, I think at the moment, is a Syrian. Um, or an admiral, but I don't really need an admiral. I'm quite happy to beef up their influence, actually. I'm, I'm okay with that. 
We'll do it. Now, I was hoping that that would increase the amount of development reduction you give me, but apparently that hasn't happened. Right, it's loyalty. So once loyalty hits, I think 50%, no, 60%, that's when we get that. Okay. Uh, don't think there's anything we want to do with you. That would increase that to 41. No. 36. Never mind. And our ruler is currently a what? Syrian. So we are currently... Yeah, we're not currently getting the advisor cost reduction from them being Syrians, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, we could try and replace them with Syrians, though. Um, except I know that you're 50% off already. I mean, we could... Yeah. Were you a Syrian? No, you were an Egyptian. I think you were the cheap guy, right? That prestige guy is also... A, no, you're a level 2. Yeah, that's a level 3 for 5 ducats. I'm going to take you, because more points is good. And actually having some more military would be very nice as well. So now we are going to be losing money. Especially while our army's morale is topped out. So I really need this uprising to happen soon. Like within the next... 37 months. <laughs> that would be great. If you just go ahead and, you know, rise up against my rule, that would be great. There you go. You two attack that. I have no generals. That is... Yes, I do. Right, you're assigned to my army up here. Okay, that's fine. You're both marching on there. That means that a general will be present to go and uh, deal with them. While the other one is drilling and getting experience. And there's the Sardo one. Hopefully we finish with these guys and just basically turn around and go and biff them. It's actually quite nice that they both spawned like at the same time. Because this means I can just go home and uh, reduce maintenance. Playing the courts. While the Shafi school is the officially sanctioned school of the Sultanate, there are many courts and quaddies throughout our lands. And all four of the schools of faith are deemed appropriate for civil procedures. So we can either move towards legalism and lose a little bit of money in Saranacia. Or move towards mysticism and lose state maintenance. I'm going for legalism just because I want to max that out. We are now at 100%. And we're not getting our full bonus. Why are we? Well, I guess it just hasn't calculated yet. End of the month, I would assume it recalculates. There we go. So we're now getting our full 20% national tax modifier bonus, 20% manpower bonus, and 10% uh, technology modifier. Which is awesome. Cool. Right, if you start heading home, I'm going to go ahead and just reduce army maintenance by half. Just so that we can recover the numbers that we have lost. And then everyone will be happy. Reformation branches out. The Reformation is spreading like wildfire across Europe. The Knights became reformed. No, Berg became reformed. Why is the Knights telling me about the Reformation then? Because you are... Yeah. It branched out into two places. I have never seen that before. So two places got the Reformation, the Reformed Reformation at exactly the same time. So we have the Knights reforming over here, which is kind of interesting. Although, what else they're going to be able... They're not a centre of Reformation, they just switched. While the centre of Reformation is actually going to be up here in Berg, which is here. So, okay. And Northern Germany is definitely flipping over to Protestant, so interesting time still due to happen. Rival of our rival. That means that we have made friends with Poland. Good, so we can stop increasing relations with them. The Poles would actually accept an alliance. And they are rivaled with the Ottomans. So we could certainly pull them into a war against the Ottomans in the future. They are rivaled with Muscovy, but we haven't seen them yet. Yes, we have. <laughs> They're right there. Big letters on the map. Not quite as big as Sweden. Sweden's still outbigging them, but they're not doing too badly. I'm actually tempted by this. Because they would certainly be a nice, useful foil against the Ottomans, although actually Hungary would be a better one. 
And you don't like Karkanulu, which I don't like either. Hungary would be the better option. So I'm going to make an alliance with Hungary. And then I think I'm going to improve relations with them as well and get a royal marriage and all that. So, yes, I'm another one over my Diplo slot, but so it goes. Uh, influencing Akanulu? No, I don't want to spend the money, but thanks. And Protestant and Reformed churches reject incense. Oh dear, so that's going to be the price of incense going down. And I think I did have some. Cleves gained 15 points of fervor. Price of incense reduced by 25%. Uh, trade goods. Uh, those, I have one. But yeah, this is definitely like the incense producing hub. Which is quite annoying, because that's definitely going to become my hub at some point. As I take over more and more of Saudi Arabia. So we can increase our control of spice. Spice must flow. It's exactly the same joke I made last time. We can incorporate Najd. It is 1512, so we can certainly incorporate someone else now. Who would be the best option? I mean, the most wealthy at the moment is Dulkadir. Although I still think they're in a good position to grab territory from the Ottomans. So I probably won't. Najd and Basra are both tiny. And then the other option is Fazan, but I quite like Fazan being a bit of a buffer between me and Tunis, because it means we don't have any overlapping territories. Um, Dulkadir also has the smallest army, interestingly. All right, we'll go for Najd. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that mission to incorporate Najd. I'm going to double check that we can actually go and start incorporating someone. We can't, not until July. Next month. Next month we can. And also have our armies... No, not even close. Our armies have not reinforced. Disappointed! Who's this? The Yemen's going after Dawashir and you didn't call me into that war. And it is literally just against you. Why didn't you call me in? You fools! I don't want you to die. I could have won you this and taken Yemen for you. Well, I guess I'll go and smack Yemen. Oh, we have a truce with them. That's why you couldn't call me in. How long does my truce last? Eight years. Hmm. Right, it's because we took these three provinces from Yemen. I understand now. I remember now. You have an amazing ruler. If he dies, you need to worry more about the number of relations you have. I've had this number of relations for a very, very long time. Yes, this is an absolutely ridiculous ruler, but I've had a couple of rulers where it just didn't matter. Uh, I had like the previous ruler had a zero in diplomacy, and I was way over. I was more over my relations limit than I am now. I still made it work, mostly because I had a diplo focus, which I could actually remove. Although I am currently in the process of trying to recover my diplo tech. So that I can increase the amount of trade income I'm getting because trade is quite lucrative. Although, to be fair, all of my income types are pretty good at the moment. I mean, the one that I'm really worried about is the lack of military, although we're about to be in a position to tech up again. Right, now would you like to vassalize? Uh, Mamluks own Dawashiri core provinces. I do. Because I would give those back to you. So that I could then vassalize you. <laughs> um, 